new products this week. Let's start off with um, sticky stuff. Okay, so these are cool. Um, they look not so interesting, but they're quite cool. So actually, go back. This is neat. These are adhesive squares that have like they're like acrylic adhesive. They're really good, and they're just uh, they're thin. They're a little bit gummy, but they're not as thick as like foam tape, and they're clear, right? They're mm -hmm. like like 99.9% .9 clear. And we actually originally got these for use with um, our LED matrices in the Ada box because you could use this to adhere the matrix onto yeah. um, the LED acrylic. Basically that. And I can even show you live. Yeah. Okay, wait, let me back this up. And then how do you... This, this like zoomed in like crazy. Okay, because we're not looking at little, little stuff anymore. So this is like the LED acrylic, and this is the LED matrix. So if you were using foam tape, you know, you would really notice like a white square covering your pixels. But JP found these. So you peel off one square and you'll notice that there's like a little, like they're sticky, but then there's a little tab. So like if you put this in the center and then you stick it down and then you can use your fingernail. Hold on. It's always hard to do the fingernail stuff under camera. Okay, so then you peel off the protector and then you see how it's clear? Then when I cover it with a LED diffuser and I have the pixels going down, you don't, like, the, there's a square yeah. there, but you don't see it. So you get, like, this perfect covering for your LED matrix. And, you know, I think only, like, one person was like, oh, if I had all the LEDs on, like, you notice it's yeah, one, so there's a little bit yeah. darker. But for the most part, you don't notice it at all. So it comes in a pack of six. Um, we cut them from rolls left over from the Ada box. Um, so if you do get a matrix portal and an LED acrylic diffuser, uh, we suggest these. I mean, they're probably good for other stuff, too. But uh, this is kind of the best use we found. Yeah, speaking of. Speaking of, we have um, the um, Matrix Portal Starter Kit. So if you missed out on Adabox, or maybe you loved Adabox so much you want it again, we now have an Adabox Starter Kit because we actually sold out Adaboxes. We don't have any left. But you can get all the parts you need to basically make the Adabox. So you get the Matrix Portal, which is our SAMD51 Cortex-M4 super fast chip with a Wi-Fi coprocessor, some buttons, um, all ready to go, plug and play matrix driver. You get, uh, yeah, you plug into the matrix like there. Um, we're also gonna give you an LED matrix. So there you go, it looks like that. And um, it has 32 by 64 RGB LEDs. And you can see here, we're actually showing it with the um, acrylic diffuser on top. Um, it also, oh, the Matrix World has an accelerometer, so you can do, like, cool LED stand demos. You get a USB-C to micro-B converter, because it's a, it, we're moving to USB-C, but we know a lot of people are, still have micro-B cables. Um, and we don't include a cable in here, because you probably have a billion cables already. Um, so we include that instead. Um, yeah, go. we got the Matrix with the, the cable, cable and power cable, the diffuser. Yes. And, uh, and it comes with a power supply as well. Yeah. But I don't think we took an individual photo of that. So you basically get everything except for, like, the wire stand. Because I don't know how many... If you want a wire stand, we have it in the store. But we figured this was the basics to get people started. Yeah, you get a lot of stuff. So if you miss out on Adabox, you can buy this. Yes. Okay. And all of our projects can be done with these parts. Next up. Okay, next up, Circuit Brains Deluxe. So speaking of the SAMD51, if you want to use that powerful SAMD51 chip on a PCB, uh, but you don't want to do a lot of fine pitch soldering... Um, this is a nifty um, surface mount module, right? But instead of like a Linux computer or Wi-Fi chip or something, it's a SAMD51. It's got some flash. Um, you do need to, you know, it's got crystal and some LEDs and passives and a reset button. You will want to um, solder it onto a board that has a USB, hold on, let me focus in, uh, a USB um, connector on it so you can actually like do USB stuff. So let me find out where the USB pins are. So there's SPI over here. Oh, there you go, D minus and D plus. Um, so you'll want to wire this up to USB, but then you get all the GPIO. You don't have to worry about stuff like the QSPI or the regulator or the button or the LEDs. Like it's all kind of done for you. Um, and these pads are really big and easy to use. So if you're not a great surface mount soldering expert, um, this lets you add Circuit Python or if you want Arduino into your design. I think it even comes with the UF2 bootloader built in. 
Next up. Next up, we have, uh, by popular demand, the ESP32-S2 Rover. So this is the version that has PS RAM, 2 megabytes of PS RAM on it, but it has a UFL connector. Why? You freaking love it. That's what UFL stands for. Uh, no, it's because you don't want to use the internal uh, Wi-Fi antenna. It's there because it's on the PCB. But the signal is routed to the UFL, and you can use an external antenna. You put an enclosure, and you can have the antenna sticking out. Or you want a better antenna, or for whatever reason, you, you want to have an uh, external antenna connection. Uh, not a problem. No sweat. You'll freaking love it because it's got UFL. Okay. And then uh, this you need to sign up for. That's but right. It's the Pi 400. The Pi 400 is here. Well, one of them is. Uh, I got one, uh, but I was, I was testing it out and making sure it works with Blinka. So the Pi 400 is a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, that's kind of stretched out and skinny and then shoved into a keyboard. Uh, it's a really lovely keyboard. So this is like a really sweet... I, I personally found it closest to like an Apple IIe. But like it kind of everybody grew up with a different computer. Somebody said it's like a Commodore sixty four. All the British people said it's like a you know ZX Spectrum. Um, but it's an all in one computer, and you kind of get everything that you would normally get from a Pi four. Um, so looking at the back, um, starting from the right, you've got that little like rectangle hole is a Kensington lock. So if this is being used in schools or libraries or maker spaces, you want to. It's so small and light, somebody could like walk off with it. Um, this way, it just keeps people from accidentally taking it or moving it. Um, there's a gigabit Ethernet. There's a USB 2 port. There's two USB 3.0 ports, so high speed. So people want to add external disk drives. USB C, uh, USB 3.0 is going to be uh, the port you want to plug it into. It's blue. Um, there is uh, two micro USB connectors. Hold on, let me actually grab this. Now the ports are getting too small. I can't see them. So sorry. After the um, USB 3, there's the. Uh, uh, sorry, I can go. Okay. It's the USB-C power pin, so you can um, power it from any USB-C adapter. There's an official Raspberry Pi one, but if you have one from like your Nintendo Switch or something, that'll probably still work. Two micro HDMI outputs, each one can do 4K uh, 30p, or one of them can do uh, 4K 60p. So like any HDMI display really will work, down to like 640 by 480. Um, for storage, there's still that micro SD slot, same thing, burn it using Etcher or Raspberry Pi burner with the latest Raspberry Pi OS. And then my favorite, it still has the 40 pin breakout. So you get I2S and SPI and I2C and UART and GPIOs and, and PWM outputs. You can connect up servos to your computer. So this makes it better than any of those old computers because they didn't have the hacker port just sticking out the side like this. Um, with so much great documentation. Of course, we have Python library code for all the pin capabilities as well. Um, and you can, you know, plug in our hats or cobblers and, and breadboard it up. So I think this is going to be a really nifty way for people to, you know, you can give a computer to a learner or a kid and, and they can build stuff with it. And it's like all in one and extremely affordable and extremely powerful. I mean, you can use it as a desktop computer, not like a work CAD computer. People are like, I couldn't learn like AutoCAD on it. No, not for that. But if you want to browse the internet, watch some videos, do your email, you know, with like do school work, what everyone does on normal games, work. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work great. So um, there's a kit. Yeah, we have two versions. Yeah, there's the kit pack. The kit pack, as shown here, you get the Raspberry Pi 400, SD card, power supply, HDMI cable, mouse, and the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide, which like teaches you how to like program in Scratch and Python and like how to set up your Raspberry Pi and, and use it and do Wi-Fi and all the things that you want to do. Um, and there's also just the Raspberry Pi 400 computer, like the bare computer with nothing else. You have to provide everything um, and that's going to be for less money I will say that the I don't think that the Pi 400 bare computer is going to be out before the end of the year I think that they've all been used in the kits so if you I mean sign up for both but I think that you will only be able to get the kits and during the holidays um, and they just don't they don't have hundreds of thousands they've got tens of thousands and then uh, beginning in the next year you'll be able to get the individual computer alone okay and they have a like 40 second video so we're gonna watch it
All right, next up. Uh, next up, we have a revision. This is the SGP-30. It's a popular um, metal oxide gas sensor that we've had for quite a while, and I've revised it. It's now STEM QT format. Folks uh, who've known us and follow us will see that we've been doing this to all of our sensors, making them plug and play. It's the same layout, same pinout, um, but now has four mounting holes, and it has uh, easy plug and play with STEM QT or Quick. Um, you've got same Arduino code and Circuit Python and Python code works for the sensor. It's kind of my favorite gas sensor, to be honest. Um, so do uh, pick one up, and uh, we even lowered the price a little bit. And star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, to the community, our customers, and our team. The BMP three ninety. Uh, people, eagle-eyed folks, will remember. Hey, didn't you cover this on INPI like only a couple weeks ago? That's right. And I loved it so much, I picked some up, and um, I put it on a breakout board. Uh, it's the same pinout as the BMP three eighty eight, and the code is basically the same library actually for both. But it's even more precise. So it now can do uh, uh, a quarter of a meter um, accuracy, I think absolute accuracy, um, compared to half a meter for the BMP388 and I think like a meter or two for the um, BMP280. So the, the accuracy and precision has improved greatly. Um, so this is going to be perfect for people making drones or other like altitude sensitive devices. Also, of course, great for like health and wearables. It's super tiny and small. You can use I squared C or SPI. So this is kind of like the next gen of BMP sensors from Bosch. Um, I like how they're they're definitely pushing forward and trying to get the best quality out of pressure sensors. It's actually kind of amazing. Like I, I built one and I was lifting it off my desk only like 10, 20 centimeters and it absolutely registered the altitude difference just, you know, in, in the apartment on my desk. So this is a... Um, a really nice little upgrade. You know, we're going to still carry the BMP 280 and the BMP 388. They're very popular, and you know, you are going to pay a little bit more for this accuracy and precision. Uh, however, I, you know, there's no better pressure sensor for the hobbyist or maker or engineer available. This is it. So uh, check it out. We'll have these in the store tomorrow, though. Mr. Products.